Right now, I'm standing in a room filled with almost 200 clay fountains. Huge shout out to the eighth grade for making these fountains. They did a great job. They've been bisque fired. And now all that needs to be done is they need to be glazed so that they can be real working fountains. So let's get busy. Before these fountains can be glazed, first they'll need a sponge bath. A sponge bath will wash all the grit and grime off so that the glaze can adhere to the side of the fountain. Make sure you go over every single part of the surface and use a brush to get down into the hard to reach areas. Take your time while you do this. Be calm and focused. It's really, really easy to break your fountain while you wash it and that's extremely disappointing. So um, take your time and don't break it. Now that the fountain's been washed, it's ready to receive its first coat of glaze. I'm gonna start with the top of the fountain, and I'm also gonna flip it upside down so I can get those hard to reach areas first. For my first layer, I've chosen a pistachio green glaze, and I'm going to stir it up really well, and then scrape any of the messy paint that's on the side of the brush back into the glaze cup so I don't end up with any messy drips. You don't want to be messy, but you do want to apply the glaze in a pretty thick coat, and it should cover up all of the orange clay. To do this, you'll need to dip back into the glaze cup fairly often to load up your brush with more glaze. I'm going to cover almost every part of the top piece of my fountain, including the bottom edge, in glaze. The only part I'm not going to glaze is the inside of it, which you'll never be able to see, so no need to glaze the uh, bottom inside. This top piece actually broke off accidentally, so I'm going to let the glaze fuse it back together in the kiln. I'll flip it over, finish painting the top, making sure I didn't miss any spots, and the first layer on the first piece is done. And I'll repeat this process on the middle part of my fountain. The only thing that's a little bit different about this piece is that I don't want to get any glaze along that bottom edge or that bottom rim. Um, I do not want this piece to fuse to the other fountain or fuse to the kiln shelf. So I'm going to keep glaze off that bottom edge and off of that bottom rim. If you get a little bit on there, it's not a big deal. We can clean that off later, but you just don't need uh, a whole coat on there. When you glaze the bowl of your fountain, you'll want to stop glazing at the point where the bottom of the bowl touches the table. If you have any nooks and crannies, like I do along my rim, that are hard for the glaze to get into, you can load up your brush with a little more glaze and dab that glaze into those spots and it will soak and flow into those hard to reach spots. Just like painting the walls of your house, one coat of paint isn't going to be enough. So I'm going to put a second layer of glaze on all three pieces. The cool thing about having to do more than one coat of glaze is that you can change up your glaze when you go to your second coat. So my first glaze was a green pistachio color, and then this glaze is more of a blue-green. And the idea is that these glazes may kind of mix and tie-dye together as they melt in the kiln. For my third coat of glaze, I'm going with a spotted kiwi, a nice bright green. I'm going to coat all parts of my fountain except for the bottom rim of that middle piece and the bottom of the bowl, making sure I'm not missing any pieces. And by the way, the chunky crystals, those are color bursts. They're basically pieces of glass that will um, melt and, and create kind of a polka dotted effect uh, when they come out of the kiln. All right, this fountain is almost ready for the kiln. It just needs a little touch up, a little clean up with a damp rag. We wanna get all of the glaze off of that bottom edge, that bottom rim. The best way to do this is to take a damp rag and hold it flat in one hand and then kind of grind the uh, piece into that rag to clean off that bottom edge without messing up any of the other glaze. You can kind of ball up the rag and clean up any spots of glaze on the bottom of the bowl, making sure that the edge of that glaze is nice and clean and then that glaze has not gone too low and is going to stick to the table. Looking good, I'm going to set the top piece onto the uh, middle of the fountain and hope that those fuse, but I will separate the bowl and the fountain piece in the kiln so that they are not fused. Remember that we still have to get up underneath that fountain piece to install the fountain pump. And then we'll close up the kiln and fire this thing. Wow, looks like things turned out well. It's glossy, very green. Let's install the pump. To get this fountain to actually work, I'm gonna take the fountain pump and attach it to a piece of tubing that I've cut to the correct length for my fountain. And I'm going to thread that up through the fountain 
and you may have to use a pencil to get it to pop all the way through the top. And then to seal this off at the top, I'm going to use a little piece of plumber's putty, which is kind of like professional Play-Doh. I'm gonna roll it up into a little baby snake and wrap it around there, press it down to make sure I've got a watertight seal. And now it's time to add the water. I'm gonna pour a cup of water into the bowl and I'm gonna pour a second cup of water into the top bowls of the fountain. You wanna go ahead and fill these up pretty good. And then the moment of truth, Eureka, it works. A real working fountain, too cool. This has been an amazing project. I really look forward to you guys glazing your fountains and seeing them come to life. It's going to be awesome. But there's nothing left to do now besides pour up a cup of coffee, read a book, and listen to the soothing, bubbling sounds of a handmade fountain.